everybody, I have a story to tell you. Please close your eyes and imagine this. It's 12 a.m. and you just got done binging off a dozen chocolate donuts, a large pizza, three bags of potato chips, and you've washed it down with a two liter bottle of soda. You're now coming down off the sugar high and you're feeling completely hopeless because you're trapped in a nearly 700 pound body. You're unable to walk for more than just a few feet. You're unable to shower. You're even unable to find your own shoes. This leaves you completely dependent on your family for everything. You haven't been out in public in years because when you do, people point, laugh, and make fun of you. On top of all that, you just got the prognosis that afternoon by your medical doctor that if you don't make a drastic change, you'll be dead within two years. Now everyone, open your eyes. That was my client, Ryan Grower. He was morbidly obese, weighing in at 675 pounds, facing the end of his life. According to the National Institute of Health, nearly 36% of American adults are obese. Some reports say by the year 2020, three out of four Americans will be obese. That a, this is a very serious epidemic that we're facing. The economic costs of the, oh, you, oh, you see obesity puts you at a very high risk for the four major diseases that are facing America. Type two diabetes, heart disease, stroke, and cancer. The economic costs of those diseases in America <laughs> are approaching $400 billion annually. There is one disease that tracks specifically with obesity. And that's type 2 diabetes, otherwise known as insulin resistance. You see, type 2 diabetes and obesity are both diseases associated with excessive amount of insulin in the body. Insulin is a hormone produced in the pancreas that pushes the nutrients we eat into the cells of our body. Think of insulin as the master hormone that controls whether you store the calories that you eat as fat or whether you burn fat as energy. You see, the problem with obesity is twofold. They store most of their calories as fat and they have completely out of control ravenous appetite. You see, there is a hormone that your body makes that tells your brain when you're full, it's called leptin. It works hand in hand with insulin. And because obese people overproduce insulin, they inevitably become leptin resistant, which means the brain doesn't get the signal that you're full. So you create this ravenous appetite, you create this vicious cycle of binging on food that only brings you momentary gratification, so you go back and binge on more food. So the problem with obesity is hormonal. The main hormone you have to address is insulin. Once you normalize insulin production, Leptin resistance will resolve itself. At that time, you'll begin to correct obesity at the root. So it turns out the number one driver of insulin production is carbohydrate consumption. You know, all the foods we love to eat, pastas, cookies, cakes, pizza, bread. Carbohydrates is one of three macronutrients that make up a diet. Protein, protein and fat are the other two. Protein and fat are essential for life. You cannot make them. You have to regularly consume essential amino acids and essential fatty acids. Because if you don't, you will cause deficiencies in the body, which will eventually lead to disease. Carbohydrate only does one thing. It gives you energy. It's considered a non-essential nutrient, which means your body has the ability to make it when it needs it. What it does is it takes the amino acids that you eat, from the protein, converts it into glucose in the liver, that process is called gluconeogenesis. So if your problem is you have an over excessive amount of stored energy, as in over 400 pounds like in Ronnie's case, and you have the ability to make glucose when you need it, wouldn't it make sense just to simply restrict all direct sources of carbohydrate from the diet and force the body to utilize the only other available energy source it can utilize, which is fat. 
You see, when you do this neat little trick of carbohydrate restriction, you literally turn your body into a fat burning machine. But it's not just restricting carbohydrates. It's adding in the only other available energy source your body can utilize, which is fat. It's what I like to call fighting fat with fat, and it's exactly the number one thing we did to address Ronnie's issue. Now here's what the fighting fat with fat diet looks like. At least 75% of your calories are gonna come from fat. We're not talking trans fats. You wanna to look to exclude those completely. You wanna to look to optimize heart healthy monounsaturated fats. And this isn't a high protein diet either. You only wanna get about 20% of your calories from protein. And only 5% of your calories are gonna come from indirect sources of carbohydrates, mostly from green leafy vegetables. You see, you shouldn't look to exclude all sources of carbohydrate from the diet. You wanna to look to take in a liberal amount of fibrous carbs coming from green leafy vegetables because what this will do is further blunt insulin release, which would augment fat burning. You see, when your diet is made up of this macronutrient profile, you slip into a state called nutritional ketosis, which means your brain no longer has an abundance of glucose to utilize as energy. So now your liver takes the fat that you eat and the fat that's stored on the body and converts it into water soluble fat energy molecules called ketones that now your brain can utilize as energy. And because it has direct access to this surplus of energy, it freely feeds off this energy, shutting your appetite down. You see, when you do this fighting fat with fat diet approach, the twofold problem of obesity has now been solved. Whereas before you were completely out of control with your appetite, you have a completely blunted appetite. Whereas before you were a fat storing machine, you are now a completely fat burning machine. Now I know what some would think, wait Nick, if I get 75 to 90% of my calories from fat, aren't I gonna develop high cholesterol? Aren't my, lip, aren't my arteries gonna clog? Aren't ketones bad for my uh, liver and kidneys? Well, this generally turns out to be not true. You see, when you select very healthy forms of fat, like monounsaturated fats, and slightly restrict calories, the ketogenic diet has been proven to be a very healthy and therapeutic diet. Now, when I speak of ketones, I'm only speaking of our nutritional ketosis, I'm only speaking of the body with this diet only producing <coughs> 0.5 millimolars to three millimolars, which is well within the healthy safe range. And it turns out, that the medical doctors and health practitioners are using the ketogenic diet to combat the four major diseases that are facing America that I mentioned earlier in my talk, type two diabetes, heart disease, stroke, and cancer. They even use the ketogenic diet for childhood drug resistant epilepsy because it's literally the only thing that will work to stop seizures in that point, at that point of the treatment. We also took Ronnie's blood work during his weight loss journey. This is what happened to him. When Ronnie started, he had the testosterone level of an 80 year old man. It was about 150. By the time he was done, it was nearly 800. That's the testosterone level of a roughly 20 year old man. When Ron, you know, doc, cholesterol is a big thing. Doctors don't want your total cholesterol to be above 200. Ronnie's cholesterol dropped to 150. Doctors want your HDL, which is considered your good cholesterol, to be above 40. Ronnie's went above 40. <coughs> triglycerides are fat floating in the, in the blood, basically. They don't, doctors don't want your triglycerides to be above 150. Ronnie's triglycerides bottomed out at 45. He was literally burning the fat in his blood. Ronnie, Ronnie's liver and kidneys were all on the low end of healthy range. And on May, Second, 2015, Ronnie Brower reached his weight loss goal, weighing in at 250 pounds in 23 months. He lost an astonishing 425 pounds in 23 months with the ketogenic diet and exercise alone, no medication. Whereas before Ronnie could only walk for more than just a few feet, 
Ronnie's able to run for miles. Whereas before Ronnie was completely dependent on his family for everything, Ronnie is completely independent, has a job, and is engaged to be married. Whereas before, Ronnie would not dream about coming out in public or even coming to an event like this, trying to, try to fit into one of these small auditorium chairs, Ronnie is actually in this room tonight, sitting in one of these small chairs. And I would like to end my talk by introducing him to you. Can you please put your hands together for one of my heroes, Ronnie Brower?